Hello and welcome to the Alexandra Wenman Show. I'm so delighted to introduce you to my guest today. He's a channel, he's an intuitive teacher, and he's also a musician. Lou Martin, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, lovely Alexandra. Thank you, thank you. So Lou, for our viewers, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're about? Sure, sure. So um, bless your heart, honey. That was lovely. You, you prayed us in. I'm still lit up from all that here. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, so I had uh, what they call a Kundalini uh, awakening in meditation like 32 years ago, 1987, during the Harmonic Convergence. And um, uh, during that time, I started to work with uh, this wonderful spirit guide named Lazarus, who's channeled through Jack Purcell. Uh, and they've been my teacher for the last 32 years here. And then about five years after that, I opened to channel after studying with uh, Michael Beckwith and uh, some other wonderful teachers in Los Angeles. And so for the last uh, 20 some years in, in this month of May, uh, I've been uh, channeling my higher self and my guides and uh, having, uh, having a great time learning about the ascension and the healing and the awakening of this uh, lifetime of lifetimes, the way my guides put it, yeah? So it's just a joy to connect with other like-minded soul spirits. I loved your, uh, hearing your story yesterday. You're blazing a, a trail for, for all of us. And um, yeah, it's, it's, as we've said, it's just time to get a whole new level of um, consciousness and connection out into the world to shine your light and share your love, as my guides say. Oh, I love it. It's so beautiful. I find that, um, yeah, we're all aligning now. There's so many people that I think have, um, especially people who do kind of channeling work or the ascension work, because a lot of people I think have um, reluctance to come out and share of themselves <laughs> in that way because it's something that's quite new. It's, you know, there's a lot of people doing it now, but it is something that's a little bit unfamiliar to the mainstream. So it's, have you found that, like kind of breaking through those, those levels of, I guess, reluctance? Sure. My, my official job title is Fool for God. You know, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, uh, that helps me. And my guides say the message for all of us is to build a bridge and get over ourselves. And, and you and I know when we, um, uh, you know, when we embrace our difference, then we get to make the difference that we've all come here to make. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... Of course, if we get uh, self-conscious or insecure, all that, uh, that gets in the way. So, you know, we're, we're so blessed, my friend. I know you know this, that, you know, we have uh, practiced and we have this openness to, to just tune in, uh, tap in and turn on, as, as Abraham likes to say. So when we, can, when we can do that, then the energies come through us, the, the light, the, the messages come through us, the music, the poetry, as we were saying here a moment ago. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, we're here to help lift up the world. But in order to do that, we have to keep getting out of our own way. And that's, that's the work, isn't it? That's totally the work. I want to know more about you as a child, Lou. When you were younger, were you having experiences when you were little? Sure. So here's, here's my story. That's a great question. Um, yes, uh, uh, the, the simple version is I always knew that I had a mission. And I always knew that it wasn't what everyone else's mission was. And... Um, uh, I was so in love with the Beatles and so in love with their music growing up that I, I actually got left back a grade because I couldn't, I wouldn't stop singing their music in class. So my teacher would be saying, is someone humming? And I'd be, la, 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 la. And I just, I thought no one could hear me, but evidently I was wrong about that. So <laughs> um, yeah, I was uh, really tapped into their music and that was a great light in my uh, whole growing up because it was so creative, so spiritual, so freeing, so, uh, so much genius in all of that. So that really helped me uh, move in a spiritual direction from an early age. I love it. I love it. And then for a, for a time, um, did you find that, did you have that spiritual thread all through your life or did you for a time find that you kind of backed away from, from it and had to reawaken it? Or? Right. Well, I had my challenges like we all do. Um, mine, mine was, um, uh, so um, I'm the eldest and then I have two younger sisters and we moved about 12 times between my birth and graduating from high school for one reason or another. Um, my, my dad left my mom for a year and had an affair when I was 13. And then he was actually murdered when I was 17. Uh, yeah. So that was my, those are my Hamlet years. 
And, uh, you know, that really got my attention. Why am I here? What's the meaning of life? Is there life after death, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I um, uh, spent uh, my 20s, uh, I went through four different colleges in three years and couldn't find anything that suited me. And then I spent my 20s uh, working in bookstores and reading voraciously and uh, smoking weed every day of my life in California and learning how to play the guitar. And then uh, the light came on when I had this awakening when I turned 30. Wow, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's incredible, those, those, those moments, those things that happen in life that sort of serve to tear us apart, almost are the things that are putting us back to who we, we're meant to be, right? That's totally it. That's totally it. it uh, you know, that's, the, that's as much wisdom as I possess in my soul at uh, the, the, the ripe age of 61 right now. Uh, if I can face, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's me. If Still I looking can, good on it, mate. Well, I'm having a good time, so that helps <laughs> a lot, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, you're, you've really uh, touched on something so important, hon, which is, you know, we often feel victimized and um, powerless in the face of circumstances. Uh, but I think the, the measure of our wisdom, like your, your wonderful title, Precious Wisdom, that we're chatting about, your book that's coming out, I can't wait to read it. Um, the wisdom is to know our oneness with all of life and to try to embrace that and say, what is the opportunity for good in this situation, for growth, uh, for, for being more of who I truly am? So, you know, we can run from it or we can face into it. I think facing into it works a lot better. I agree. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So you're a California boy and you now live in Ireland. How did that come about? Yes, I'm starved for the sun, like you are of coming from Australia and the UK. Um, well, I have Irish ancestry on both sides of my family. And, uh, you know, after living in the States for 50 years, I lived all over the, the country um, uh, growing up. And then as an adult, I was in uh, Arkansas. I was in Kansas City. I was in Northern California, Sedona, Arizona, all these great places. Um, and uh, I just want, I really had a hunger to connect with Europe. So I actually uh, fell in love with a wonderful uh, lady and uh, moved to Vienna for a year, which was the culture shock of my life after <laughs> California. Yeah. Yes. Quite, qu quite different on every level. And then, um, uh, long story short, uh, landed in Ireland and really felt a sense of um, kinship and uh, uh, you know, a calling to stay here and to really reconnect with my roots. So it's been kind of an ongoing pilgrimage ever since I've managed to, to be here for the last decade. It's a magical place, isn't it? It's, um, I always yes. think of the Fae and the fairy folk and all the, 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 the kind of Celtic pagan um, side of things out there, the stone circles and the magic. And so which area are you in? I'm in West Cork, which is oh, truly, yeah, truly beautiful. We actually have uh, the drum bag stone circle, which is uh, uh, just uh, about a half an hour down the road. And um, Joanne and I are gonna go visit that tomorrow, which we're excited about which is 3000 years old. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a proper uh, circle with a, with an altar. Uh, and um, it, it, yeah, there's so many places in Ireland. It just, it boggles the mind how many sacred sites there are here. And I've barely scratched the surface after a decade. I've got a great fr friend I want to connect you with, Tracy O'Connor. She knows all these sites and she's uh, bringing spirit to corporations and uh, preparing to bring people to the sacred site. So all of that is in the works as well. So I'm, I'm sure there'll be a lot more connections coming up here. There's a real bridging going on, isn't there, between, I think, the spiritual world and the corporate world and the scientific world. And I feel like we're sort of, I think, in, the, in more of us kind of stepping out and doing this work and normalising the language around it. It's starting to become more and more part of the norm, I think, which is... Yes. Really Yes, it's brilliant. And as we've also discussed, I, I think that uh, the, the, the kids, you know, uh, are, who are really finding their voice now with climate change and uh, one thing and another, uh, you know, are absolutely going to push us if we don't, uh, you know, uh, keep our own pace uh, to, to help bring these energies out into the world. Um, there's no doubt um, uh, titanic change is on the horizon for the planet and we're all blessed to be a part of it. It does feel, it feels rapid. I find um, 2019, there has been a speeding up of things, like almost a slight, I, wouldn't, I don't know, I want to call it an urgency. There's an urgency in these children marching and things like that. But it, yeah. it also feels like the more we're becoming aware of kind of the, 
the things that aren't for our highest and best good and the decisions that are being made on a political stage and things like yes. that, the more people are questioning and going, hang on a minute, this isn't, yeah. isn't right. You know, this whole follow the leader, follow who's in charge, blind authority kind of thing, it's yeah. washing with people anymore. And it's people are, I think are now kind of, whether they call it spiritual or not, they're, they're starting to awaken to what do I really want? What do I really need? What's going to serve me? And where, where is my fulfillment? Because the, I think they're starting to realize that actually, you know, if you follow the leader and you pay the bills and you work all the hours, life yeah. is not that fulfilling anymore, right? It's that's, not. That's, yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely true, hon. You, you, you said it beautifully. Um, uh, my teacher Lazarus calls it the return of the divine feminine. Yes. And, exactly. You know, and they say she's never left, but she's returning. Yeah. And so it's like uh, the quote from my guides is our heart knows what our mind struggles to believe and understand. So, you know, uh, as a, you know, 90% of my clients and students over the last 30 years have been, have been women. And uh, it's because women are more in touch with th those values, as you said, and, and the need to honor those values. And of course, we're seeing this, as we said, not only in the, 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 the millennials and the children, but also in the women you know, truly finding their voices, taking their power back. I've done a lot of work with women about anger mm -hmm. uh, because the, the rules of the game have been that uh, men are allowed to be angry but can't be sad and women are allowed to be sad but can't be angry, angry. Yeah. right? So I find that when I am able to uh, encourage and support women to be in touch with their emotional truth and express their anger, that they also release uh, old feelings of hurt and feeling unseen, unheard, unsupported. And then they start to really come into their empowerment and their passion and their truth. And they're able to assert and express themselves with greater courage and confidence and really take their power back. So I, I see that uh, I, very intimately in my work these days. That's so wonderful. It's wonderful that, um, cause then, you know, obviously there are less men um, who are kind of on that kind of awakening feminine path. So it's wonderful to have a man who can hold that energy. And I find that as a woman, you kind of, you need a, a, a strong man who can hold you in that falling apart. Um, sure. and, you know, I've written a lot of very angry poetry over the last right. few years. Right. My outfit is like, rah, like Sekhmet, you know, coming through. Um, <laughs> raging <laughs> woman. Yeah. I think I wrote one about a screaming banshee. Um, yeah. Good, and good darkness rising, but then ultimately that darkness is like being in a womb and we're, we're just being rebirthed anew. And I think it's yes. really great when, um, when you can see that there are uh, some of these male teachers who are holding that divine masculine for this feminine unfolding. So yes. in terms of your, your work, do you run sort of group, group circles and workshops and things that... Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, yes, uh, yes, you're doing fine. You're, you're, uh, you're, you know, I just step into that, that uh, great um, uh, understanding. Yeah. So, I mean, with the channeling, like with yourself, I'm sure, you know, we create a safe space and we invite people to feel safe, loved and supported so that they can listen to trust and follow their own inner guidance. The way we do that is by going into peace as often and as deeply as possible. When fears and judgments and anger and grief come up, that is uh, the time and the, and the vibration for us to, to look at that differently and to feel it and to release it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, just like we're having a lovely chat here today, you know, we, we, the energy comes through each of us and the energy is doing its thing and we're going, you know, la, la, la. And then at some point we do a bit of channeling, guided meditation, these kinds of exercises so people can go really deep. And, uh, you know, uh, we can lead people to the doorway, isn't it, uh, to the threshold. And then they get to make that choice, that decision, that surrender on, in, in their own time and in their own way. And when that happens, whether it's in the circle or the one-on-one -on -one or, or later, you know, that's when the release takes place. And then they begin to see, feel, experience their reality completely differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I say, I did the channeling this morning on my morning prayers uh, on my Facebook uh, page there. I do a 9 to 9.30 and I do a channeling at the end of it. And today's theme was beauty. And beauty, of course, is when we um, love ourselves and love each other and we, we stop, you know, fearing, doubting, judging, worrying. And we just, you know, let, let spirit come through us and we become more beautiful, of course, as we do that. 
Oh, it's so lovely. And I know you sent me your ebook the other day. Lou has a, a, a wonderful ebook. Um, and I only got to read the first bit, but everything that you said in there resonated so much. Everything about, you know, the guides just come in. It's just a loving guidance. They don't try to overtake you when it's coming through in love. You absolutely know that you get a sense of overall well being and, and beauty. And it's a very gentle, uplifting, empowering energy, isn't it? So, yes. I know more about your your guides Lou so when did you first start connecting with your channeling guides and and can you tell us anything about them sure hun. sure so um uh, there was a wonderful teacher in Los Angeles uh her name was Cheryl Taylor and uh, she did a class she was an extraordinary channel uh she could talk backwards and, and <laughs> do all sorts of amazing things um I was blown away by her so she she offered a class about opening to channel and I took that and I think it was you know, uh, over the course of a month, one evening, et cetera. And at the end of that, I just, I was there. And uh, I, m with my girlfriend at the time, I started practicing with her and it just, uh, it came through and it's never stopped. So it's, you know, t to me, I I I'm a conscious channel. So I'm, I'm not really in a deep trance. It's kind of a blending and I, I know their energy and feel it and trust it. And, uh, you know, it just, it just uh, bubbles through me and works through me and we chat just like we're chatting here. And, um, you know, it, uh, it, it helps to hold that space for magic and miracles. It's wonderful. It's so one I can yeah. feel so many guys around. <laughs> no, I just yes. think I love you. The energy here is incredible. I'm like, ah. <laughs> who needs drugs when you've got this? It's just absolutely well, funny. Yes, I have, I have been sober <laughs> for 30, 30 years now, thanks to spirit, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in terms of channeling, do you channel many different types of guides? Is, it could be a different guide each time. Coming um, through, or is it a no. Yeah, it's always the same energy, uh, Alexandra. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, just, uh, you know, you and I know that spirit is not quite so attached to its individual identity as it's human beings. Isn't it? yeah, yeah, it's always the party. It's always a blending, you know. And if, uh, if um, someone's uh, dead relative, uh, you know, on the other side needs to jump in, the, the, in spirit, sure, that's fine. And, um, you know, uh, whenever people ask questions, there's always a kind of like, you know, uh, gathering of the forces here. So, yeah, it's just, um, you know, it's just that beautiful energy that honestly, I'm sure the same with you. Uh, it's like the music and poetry. I'm, I'm high uh, as a kite uh, for, for hours <laughs> after, it's, after I get to do it. So. It is because it's like, it's, it's more, I always say it's more than just the words coming through. There's so much more. There's, there is like a, a vibration a musicality to it, light vibration, light codes, but you feel it. And whenever, um, I, I'm sure you, you get this as well, um, that when you're delivering a channeled message, the actual spoken words are just one tiny component of what's actually going on. It's like this overall healing happens really amazing it's beautiful i can feel i can feel it um i wanted to get your take on uh the whole ascension thing so what sure. in your in your um in your view what is unfolding on our planet right now what is going on <laughs> right right wow that's a that's a give me an easy one yeah that's a good question <laughs> take um, as long as you need Lou. <laughs> all right sweetheart. bless you bless you um well you know um so Lazarus and Drunvalo Melchizedek, who have been two of my favorite teachers, uh, they, they talk about the fall from grace, Patricia Cota Robles as well. And I, I, that's my take on it, that uh, during the fall of Atlantis, you know, we kind of came out of the garden and we fell into our left brain and we closed our heart and pushed the divine feminine out of us uh, in fear and confusion. And so for all this time, you know, thousands of years, literally, we've been going uh, back up slowly, slowly up back up the ladder, up the spiral, better, better analogy. And, um, you know, we're now at that place where, as you said about um, uh, my ebook, it, it, it's titled The Invitation because, uh, you know, as, as The Course in Miracles says, love invites and fear demands. So this is, this is the difference. Um, uh, we're, you and I are uh, souls at a particular vibration and many other people who are awake or awakening or, you know, a step before us, a step behind us, etc. We've been preparing for this time for many lifetimes. 
And, um, you know, now as the energies get higher and higher and higher on the planet and throughout um, the universe, uh, you know, we, we know that we're moving into uh, uh, living in a different vibration. So, um, you know, love is inviting more and we're, we're learning to receive more. And it is, it is absolutely changing all of us. So it, uh, we want to give ourselves to love completely and let it have its way with us. Um, and as we do that, you know, uh, every day, uh, then, uh, you know, things are changing uh, in society. It's breaking up the old mindsets and old fears and doubts and, and struggles and whatnot. So, you know, we, you can see it very simply, of course, the patriarchy, which is authoritarian and, and domineering. This is um, the wonderful book, Chalice and the Blade by um, Rianne Eisler, if people know it. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. So th th these times are very short-lived in history, is, is, is the historical record. Because, of course, uh, like Donald Trump is the best and the worst uh, expression of that at the moment, God love us, and Vladimir Putin right there and a few others. So, you know, it's truth doesn't matter. Other people don't matter. You know, whatever I can bully into existence, that's what I want. And it's all about me versus, you know, we take care of each other. We love and respect each other. We, the earth is sacred. Life is sacred. Uh, we want to give to each other, uh, you know, the, the divine feminine once again. So, you know, she's returning inside of us and, and she's inviting us to remember who we are, but it's entirely based on our free will. Yeah, it's that's, that's beautifully put. Really thank beautifully you. put. Thank you. Thank um, you. And for, I guess from a from a man's perspective as well, um, I, how do you feel about the, people's take on the masculine? Because obviously, you know, there's. A, have you found there's any kind of backlash going on? You know, towards men. Have you have you experienced any of that? Well, well, um, I've been in, I've done men's groups. I've been in men's groups. One of the heroes of my awakening was this wonderful poet who's now about 92 years of age named Robert Bly, who, uh, who wrote a book called Iron John. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there are others, John Lee and Sam Keen and um, many, many others out there, Michael Mead. Uh, the mytho-poetic men's movement was, was what it was uh, called in, in the 80s and 90s, where they were doing drumming circles and they were, you know, doing their grief work and they were supporting each other to feel their feelings and to heal and all of that. And that's, so that's the grief part of, you know, men are allowed to be uh, angry, but can't be sad. So for me, the, the death of my father and, and all, all my circumstances of growing up, you know, kind of like set me up perfectly for like, okay, brother, it's time for the grief now. So, <laughs> One of the things uh, that I've been a part of is the family constellation work. My, my housemate is a, a facilitator. I've done 35 family workshops uh, with him. And every, everyone has been a celebration of grief, uh, you know, for me and for everyone that's been a part of the work here. So I'm saying uh, in, in terms of your question about men, I know this is the work that men have in front of them if they haven't begun to do this, to... To, as my guides say, to soften, to open, and to deepen. And, uh, you know, as you said, uh, the, uh, the world, the structure, our society, the way it's set up, you know, so much of it is, is about performance and uh, proving things and, and pressure and, and, you know, creating success on a certain level. But as, as we've said, and as we know, uh, Deepak Chopra puts it beautifully, there was the um, industrial age, the information age, and now we're in the wisdom age. So our oneness and our love and respect, yes, hallelujah, thank you, God. Um, now time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so men who know this and feel this and are moving in this direction, uh, Miguel Dean is another friend of mine who's in the UK who's doing this kind of work and, and as an author. Uh, we're speaking together at uh, Anrita Melchizedek's Glastonbury, which is coming up June 20th through the 23rd. Uh, so that's out there. That's a great event I'm a part of. So yeah, there are some men. Uh, I've connected with others. You, you mentioned Damian Nola. We're, we're, we've yeah. connected and Will Reardon and others. I know there are many others, but there are not nearly enough is the, is the simple answer. Yeah, I, I you know? tend to agree. I also know a lovely um, guy called George who's teaching uh, holding divine masculine circles. I know another guy, Aldo, who does a lot of work with men. I think it's very important that as we kind of move into this reemergence of the divine feminine, that we also forgive the patriarchy. Yes. 
yes. you know, that love and forgiveness, isn't it, that, that's going to move yeah. us forward. And because one of the things that I do know is well, back in the times of, say, ancient Egypt and Atlantis and those times on the planet and even during more sort of um, indigenous times on the earth and uh, especially in our Celtic pagan roots. Yes. Very much a balance. It was more of a matriarchal society. Yeah. You know, the matriarchy, you know, I guess... Um, it's worth noting that the matriarchy is not the opposite of the patriarchy. This it's is right. A squash yeah. of, um, of men yeah. or a repression. It's, right. a, it's a working together and, and each component within ourselves too, right? The masculine yes. and the feminine working together. Yes. Um, and the masculine and the feminine counterparts working together and each kind of holding each other in that. And I yes. think it's absolutely right. We're all kind of... Um, allowing our emotions to now emerge in the in a way i find that there are a lot of men that are very much struggling with this at the moment like feeling right. like they've lost their place in the world or as right. women find their voice uh, a lot of men i feel who maybe aren't on such an awakening path are kind of feeling like their voice is being taken and they they're kind of struggling with how to position themselves in the world what would you say to um to any men experiencing that well bless them uh, this is, I quite agree with you, hon. This is um, uh, the machismo, you know, uh, the like either I'm the boss or I don't know which way is up, you know, and it's like, well, brother, you better get used to, uh, the, you know, there's a new, there's a new way of doing things. And you said it beautifully, hon, and, and we know it, uh, everyone knows it in, in our hearts when we, when we go there deeply. Um, you know, the, the, the goddess is the source of all life. And she called forth the energy of the God and together they created what we know as reality. This is the way it's been explained to me and it makes perfect sense. So the goddess, like you said, she doesn't want to dominate. She wants to work with and harmonize with. This is why men are, tend to be about um, uh, having a mission in the world and you know, achievement and, and success on that level. And women are always uh, inherently about relationship and family and those are their core uh, values. So as we're saying here, as the emotional part of us, the heart, the feminine energy in men and women becomes more and more stirred up and activated and, and, and rises to the surface, the, the mind has to get out of the way. You know, it's got to learn to see things differently and to surrender to things differently. And um, so like, uh, here's my shameless plug now. My, my workshop at the, uh, at the end of the month in, in Portsmouth uh, is uh, called Path of the Heart. And that is, you know, my handy little title for what I've experienced in 30 years and inviting to share it with people. Because if uh, we can help people open their hearts, then their mind will heal by itself, you see. Uh, that's, that's where the power comes from. And, um, uh, but it's about, again, uh, feeling safe, loved, and supported to surrender into that. As you said, with the bringing in the energy here before we began and, and feeling it now, it, you know, it wants to keep bringing us back to who we are, but it, it's not going to make us do it. It's going to call that to us, just like the divine feminine. She doesn't demand. She is magnetic and irresistible. And anyone goes, my God, she's so beautiful. I can't, I can't resist that call. So that's, that's what I see is happening. And it, you're right, it's happening in every human heart. And um, um, uh, it's, it's a real tsunami of emotion that uh, we're moving through from time to time in, in these uh, times of great awakening and healing. Uh, but um, that's where we want to go in our heart of hearts. We want to remember who we are. We want to have lives of great passion and purpose and, and fulfillment and love. And, you know, the mind can't do it. The mind is incapable of figuring things out without that, uh, that inner guidance. It's so true. I, I want to get your take on this. So how can uh, we as women uh, hold men in their kind of awakening or in their coming? Because what you've got here is women kind of starting to express their anger and coming back yeah. to fire and their power. Yeah. Uh, and it's tempting to basically be like, Rah, you know, sure. and have sure. it. Sure. But then at the same time, you've got men kind of there going, you know, trying to, trying to soften into that and um, yes. Yes. also not wanting to let go of their power. How can we as women support men more? Sure, men? sure, bless you. I know, honey, this is the greatest battle on the face <laughs> of the earth right now. Yes. Absolutely. It is the battle between the feminine and the masculine <clears throat> in, in the form of relationships, 
uh, with men and women. And uh, so the, the message from my guides is, is about the triangle or the pyramid. So here's uh, the woman and here's the man and here's spirit at the mm -hmm. top of the pyramid. And so um, uh, if each of us has our own personal organic, authentic, intrinsic, daily connection to something outside of myself that is more than myself, then I can bring that into my work and my relationships and my life and my family and friends. If I am looking, if I don't have that, then we're just looking for, for all of that from each other and it will, will always be disappointed because none of us can be a higher power to each other. So that's the simplest way I can, I can uh, express what you're asking me here. We, uh, I've felt, as I'm sure you have one, that the, the greatest service I can do to the world is get my own personal life together and understand how I can connect to spirit whenever I need or want to and let that be more real than people, places, things, and situations that try to rule my consciousness from time to time. So when we can do that inner, inner journey, uh, you know, my guides say uh, uh, meditation, prayer, affirmations, keeping a journal, and finding and following our inspiration every day and being of loving service to ourselves and each other. That's, that's the foundation of good, uh, of having a strong uh, uh, energetic uh, container to deal with everything that goes on. And if we can have and create and sustain that, then we can learn to love and respect each other. But without that, it's, it's too distracting, it's too confusing, it's too overwhelming, I'd say. I agree, I agree. And all those old um, reference points from the physical world that we're trying to hold on to are crumbling away anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just finding that the, the rug is coming out from under us or the, the stepping stones that we're used to walking on are not there anymore. There's an abyss there and it's like you have to be your own life raft, don't you? And Yes. <laughs> that's, where we, that's where we looked within and that's where we looked to spirit to then then we have something more there. Yes. We have reference points there as we expand that, that consciousness and that heart out. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you, you can hear as both of us are des uh, describing this and discussing this, this is the leading edge, you know, as Abraham says, this is uh, where humanity is standing right now today and wanting to move forward. And I I'm sure that you and I are going to experience many more wonderful insights and revelations and miracles and connections to help us to do that. Um, you know, we have to know that there is a choice in order to make a choice. And I think that's part of what we get to do, uh, living lives that we're blessed to live in this way, as you and I are, and, and many others now. Um, you know, uh, but we can't do it for each other. We can only do it ourselves and say, this is what works for me, or this is what I have to share. Yeah, I think that's it. And hold each other lovingly in that, like, for that unfoldment, isn't it? It's, we can't push or force anything. Just allow it, each each person to be who they are and, and to allow them to unfold and blossom in their own way. Beautifully said. That's right. That's what healing is to my mind. Exactly. You've said it beautifully, you know, mm -hmm. is uh, to hold that space. That's what the divine feminine does for us. She holds that space to invite us to remember who we are and to let go of who we're not any longer. Mm -hmm. That's it. I love it. Beautiful. Lou, it's so wonderful to talk to you today. Is there any final thing that you'd like to say to our viewers before we... Well, will I give you a little blast of my channels, my guides? Yes, please. Sure. Oh, my sure. goodness. Sure. Amazing. I, I think that'll be the, the icing on the cake here. Absolutely. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, hon. I, I love you. I'm so grateful to know you. This is oh, wonderful. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Thank you dear. All right, so I'm just going to turn it in, take a moment. Right, God, yeah, here we go. Dear friends, God bless you. Uh, yeah, coming, coming to this moment here, uh, Alexandra, God bless you, dear friend. What a bright light, a beautiful soul you are in this world. Dear friends, imagine uh, seven stars spiral down through time and space. Touch your crown, take a nice deep breath. Relax and release. Let the energy flow through those seven centers, crown, third eye, throat, and heart, and breath into the heart. Relax and release the will center, the sacral, the root, down the hips, legs, feet, flowing down into Mother Earth to the crystal core at the center of Mother Earth. Another good breath. 
God bless you, dear friends. And there you are, lit up and tuned up and uh, lifted up once again. So dear friends, yeah, Alexandra and your beautiful audience here, this is your moment. And you will hear this theme over and over again, but we're glad to tell you here and now today, this is your moment. This is that moment that you've been looking for, preparing for and uh, seeking opportunity to co-create with spirit a life of greater authenticity, dear friends, the theme of the day to be sure, and a life of greater thus joy and fulfillment. It begins by loving self, dear friends, as you love and accept and honor what you feel, what you believe, what you desire, what you value, dear friends. So life begins to respond to you in new and wondrous ways. And the energies of magic and miracles become a daily accompaniment to your journey, dear friends, and no longer something distant or removed or in someone else's care or keeping. Dear friends, you are powerful spiritual beings having a magnificent and a unique human experience, unlike any you've known in any lifetime. So the um, yeah, idea here, dear friends, the invitation once again is to receive the gift. To, life is a gift, it opens from within. In these quiet moments, dear friends, when you turn towards the truth in your heart, soul, and spirit, and you surrender all to that, so you are truly embraced and valued and cherished and loved. Take a deep breath. Dear friends, you go forth from moments like this with a new sense of clarity and purpose and a new sense of possibility and hope. And even more than all of that, dear friends, you carry your heart in your hands with a greater sense of your value to this world, that you have a purpose, dear friends, that your passion is your purpose, and that we are with you each and every step of the way, ready to do it, dear friends, with you, never for you, because you are the creator and not the victim of this reality that you are bringing into a new vibration, a new earth a new experience, dear friends, indeed, a new dream. So lift up your hearts, shine your light, share your love, give thanks, and know that all is truly well for you. Be at peace. We'll meet again. We love you so. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Namaste. Wow. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> that was beautiful. I got very strong Pleiadian energy coming through there, like very beautiful kind of pale blues and violets and pink kind of lights. Really stunning. Gorgeous. Well, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I believe it is as well, you know, but it's also all that and my higher self and whatever yeah. wants so to it happen. It is. It's collective consciousness, isn't it? It's yeah. 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 It's your higher self and then all, I guess, all of your your connections and all star connections and all earth connections in one it is. And that's part of what we are part of, isn't it? That divine oneness, <laughs> that divine oneness, that divine consciousness that is, but permeates everything really, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you, what the work that you and I have to do is already challenging enough to try and explain Pleiadians to everyone. I just found a little... A little much uh so you know i try to keep it simple yeah yeah, yeah. Well, each person will receive exactly what they need in, in sure in sure anyway. sure <laughs> yes and it's always about uh the love the 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 energy and you know how people feel what they take from the experience that's what i value 100 percent. well i definitely for one feel in reinvigorated um Yay. <laughs> very softened like beautiful love energy all around like very almost like um i call it like angelic sedation <laughs> yes yes, Ooh, yes. can i can i leave you with a, a poem yes i'd love to hear one all right sweetheart this is called the shift and it goes like this the shift is moving from fear to love is taking your power back is finding your center no matter what is using your mind in service to your heart is surrendering your small self to your grander self, is taking time and making space for peace as often and as deeply as possible, is trusting in source as self, is opening to the heart of infinite possibilities, is loving and being loved and letting love guide you, is listening to the whispers in the silence and the stillness, is finding nature in your own time and timelessness, is allowing the universe to make the first move, is believing in what you sense is true for you, is real. 
more real than you, than you can know, is feeling so glad to be you here now. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Lou, thank you so much. Um, so how can people find you? Uh, can you share your website and your, your, your social media handles and everything for us? Yes, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> With pleasure. Um, my my actual my website is uh, undergoing a redo right now, so so I won't give you the, the that one. But you can find me, of course, on my Facebook page, which is Lou Martin or Lightheart 2012. And I was mentioning uh, Alexandra, you, you know, you and anyone who's a teacher uh, is invited or, or wants to share teachings to go to um, Awakened Spirits Network on Facebook. Uh, that's that's a, a wonderful group there. And um, you can uh, also uh, get me on my email at lightheart2018 at gmail.com. And yeah, please, if you've heard the show here today and it's touched you, uh, please feel free to say hello. I'd love to connect with you and send you my ebook. And uh, the, um, the drum roll here is that I'm coming to the UK for the first time uh, at the end of the month. And I'm doing um, a Friday night talk at the Hamblin Center on May 24th. And uh, then a one-day workshop, The Path of the Heart. Uh, in Portsmouth at Sarah Williams' home on May 25th, and I'm staying Sunday for one-to-one -one sessions uh, at Sarah's home May 26th. That's um, that's it. Wonderful, and I'll share all the links below so people can just click through and find you as well. And, Brilliant. Um, and for for people who are who are international, Lou, do you do Skype one-on-one -on -one sessions as well? I do. I do. Yes, I'm a big fan of Skype and Zoom, and I'm also doing a uh, an online uh, workshop this Sunday, uh, which is on my page as well on um, uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. So Sunday people are invited to that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we'll, everyone can find the links, and I'm, and um, I'll share everything below. But yes, please. Ooh, what an amazing, amazing chat! <laughs> Hey, thank you so much. I'm so pleased we've connected, honey. It, it just thank you. Absolutely wonderful. It just feels like another another soul brother that I've yes. found on the path. That you know, I'm sure that we've known each other many, many rounds, many lifetimes. <laughs> yes. Um, I need to tell our viewers actually that I had a dream the night before Lou and I were put in touch, and he was in my dream, and we were doing an event together and we met at an event so it's interesting when he when he contacted me through facebook through our mutual friend sarah i looked at the picture and i was like that's who he is <laughs> i feel like we're all we're all being connected up we're all remembering each other i feel like we, there are those of us who are who are dreaming of each other or hearing each other even before we've kind of connected here so the connections are happening almost before the connections are happening it's really interesting I'm loving it. I'm yeah, absolutely yeah. loving it. This is just such an exciting time. And I love you, darling. I'm so grateful to you. I can't wait to see what's next for both of us. You too, lovely. Thank, thank you, you very much for joining me, Lou. And for those of you watching, thank you so much for, for being here to, uh, to watch the Alexandra Wenman show. And we're done. Woohoo!